We're the Youth Survive development team. I'm David Schmidt, a senior in computer science. I'm Joseph Still, a senior in computer information systems. I'm Tyler Vancott, and I'm a senior in computer science. I'm Jay Van Goosby, and I'm a senior in computer information systems. I'm Matt McKee. I'm a senior in computer information systems. So a big question would be, why create you survive? So with so many different platforms to be given homework and assignments on that professors use, it is essential to have one app that allows you to be able to access your assignments all at one time in one location. So that's where our you survive app comes in. So with other with other applications such as Microsoft Teams or Blackboard or Dropbox, it's catered towards the professors and you get notifications and assignments when professors want you to have it or when they upload it. Whereas at times maybe a professor is giving an assignment just in class and they didn't upload to Blackboard. If you survive, it allows you to put in to input the assignments that you have, or you can go ahead and put your classes in advance, whether you have like uh, previous classes that you want to keep or future classes that you know you're going to prepare for. So with the use of an app, it is catered towards the student to organize it in the way that they seem fit. So next, it will be Joseph going to explain the terminology and the technology used. All right, the user right application was written primarily in C sharp with the Windows presentation framework serving as the graphics serving as the GUI framework. Any unit was used for unit testing and Visual Studio was used for development. Overall, our technologies worked very well for us as a whole. However, since we had no significant prior experience with them, it was challenging to learn all of these systems in a very short amount of time. We also experienced some issues that were very specific to what we were doing and had to find creative solutions to fix those problems. Now, we're going to take a look at the app. Right now, we are at the home screen. This is what the user will see when they first open the app. At the very top of the screen, we have the four major tabs views um, but on the home screen we have the current classes and this will show a complete list of every single class the user has added in parentheses we have the current grade for the class for the grades that the user has inputted if there are no grades it will simply uh, display in slash a below that we have the upcoming assignments this shows the user any upcoming assignments that they have added into their assignments. Uh, each assignment has a name, the class that's attached to, a due date, and a priority. The user can use the slider down at the bottom and uh, adjust it to view more than one week ahead. The slider goes all the way up to 15 weeks, and as you progress the weeks, more assignments will appear if they've been added. To the right of that, we have the Overdue Assignments tab. This will display any assignments that the date has passed and have not been completed. These show up in red to mark the urgency. If there are no overdue assignments, it displays a happy green message to show you have no overdue assignments. Moving to the right, we have the sidebar. The sidebar shows in the uh, currently logged in user with a welcome message. And underneath that, we have a calendar. Now, pressing the days on the calendar will cause the two boxes below to change. The top box will show the current classes for that day. And the bottom box will show current assignments that are due from that day. Next, I'll turn it over to Joseph and he will explain the user file system. So user file stores all user information in folders. We call those user files. So, so on the home screen, if you click the user files button, this dialog box appears, which lets you choose different user profiles. Right now, we've only got one, but you can also import and export user files. So let's say someone wants to add their user file into your copy of user survive 
you click the user file import or export button down at the bottom here and say import a new database, a file browser window will come up. So you find your user by file, and you will see that the database has been imported successfully. Now, when we open up this drop down menu, you can see you Miss Janeway's profile right here. So click on that and hit select. And as you can see, the user by window changes to reflect that new user profile. Now I'm going to hand it over to David to explain the classes. So next we have the class view and the class assignments tab or the class tab. So from left to right, it is the name of the class, the instructor of the class, the credit hours that the class holds and the instructor emails, the meeting times that the class meet. And then you have three edit buttons that are attached to each class, whether you, that way you can view it, edit it, or delete a class. So if you click the if you click the tab, the name tab, it'll organize it to where you can organize it by class or just by order of creation. To add a class, you can click the add a class tab down in the bottom right corner. And it'll display a dialog box. There you can insert and create your class. Class name can be whatever the name of your class is. And then you have the instructor where you can put an instructor name and then the credit hours, the way that it holds the instructor email that they use the website, such as the website that um, is offered for the class or the website that the class uses, such as Microsoft Teams or Blackboard, et cetera. And then the meeting times, of course, and then the class type. Uh, whether it's in person or asynchronous or virtual. And then you enter your notes that you have for yourself for the app. And on the side, you can edit the meeting times, duration of the week, very specific, and save it. And all that will then eventually appear at the bottom of your class view. And it does also show up in the home. So on the classes tab, when you hit the delete key, you can remove the class as well. And it'll delete it. And then when you hit the view, when you hit the view tab, it automatically displays the information that was previously entered by the user. Now that is the end of the class tab and I will pass it on to the next person for the assignments tab. Assignments, assignments allows you to view any assignments that you have already entered, and you can also edit assignments that you've um, already created. Of course, you can also add assignments, which we can do now. When we're adding an assignment, we can give it a name, tell it which class it belongs to, assign it a due date and priority, have that priority automatically increase over time with the auto increment option and how many and how frequently for it to increment. And we also have a notification time. You survive will in fact notify you at that notification time when it is due, if at all. And it, you can classify the type of classwork as an assignment, assessment, or an exam. You can also mark your assignment as completed or not. So we can save that information. And then we will see that because the assignment was uh, already set to notify, it has notified us. Um, we can also um, snooze the assignment and it will uh, notify us once again if we want to. OK, we can also delete assignments. Uh, so we can demonstrate this just by deleting any of the assignments we have here. That is all for assignments view. Next, we're going to be talking about the gradebook view. 
So here at the gradebook view, you can see all of your assignments that have been added, what classes are for, when they're due, and your points earned, the max points you can earn, and the amount of hours. The amount of hours is determined when you, when you create the class, and it's based on what class the assignment is for. If you want to change this, you have, you can, you have to edit it in the class. Uh, you have to edit the actual class itself. As you can see at the top of the screen, there's a filter that when you click on it, you're able to uh, you're able to show just the specific uh, assignments for a specific class. So, uh, in order to change the amount of uh, in order to reset it, you actually have to click away. Uh, that will remove the filter. Uh, in order to change the amount of points earned or max points, you double click on the cell you want to. Uh, you want to edit, so we'll do the homework too, and uh, Joseph will do that for me. Once you do that, you'll notice that it, uh, it it will update your grade. It will also update your semester GPA automatically, which tells you what uh, your GPA is for that semester given all the classes you have. Obviously, right now it says zero because because uh, it currently uh, that class is currently being failed. Uh, in order to display your GPA for each specific class, you can click the GPA, uh, the display GPA button, and that'll pop up a separate screen where it will show you all your different GPAs for each class. And if you or if you know your current GPA, you can click on the Enter Current GPA button, and you just type in your current GPA. And once you click uh, display GPA, it will average those out and it'll show you what your updated uh, GPA will look like if you continue with these grades. That concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for watching.